The shoe. Where did you get the oh, shoe? I guess locally from uh, other like stores and stuff. I try to stay local. But... You bought it from Timu? I started Crooks and Castles. So you started Crooks and Castles, the one that the <laughs> serpent, the snake. Right. So it's taken off. We just saw uh, Playboy Cardi wear this piece. Can you tell me a little about this? And that mindset is going to keep you in that same space. You'll never grow. All you guys remember like the era of like the fucking the hot Cheeto socks? That was us. That was you. That was me. That was you. You flooded the street. I, street I corner. Oh. And the NBA and the Universal Studios and everybody else. If I'm just getting my brand started, like coming to a show like this, is that something that even need to be in my mind? What up, y'all? It's your boy E back again with another video. Today, we pulled up the project. So this is on the other side of sourcing. And essentially, it's the front end. It's where brands come and they try to sell to retailers. So let's go interview some brands and let's go check it out. All right, so we got a legend in the building. Dennis. What up? Chris tells me you're like goaded, huh? <laughs> I've been in industry for quite some time. What was your famous brands that you worked for? I worked for Echo Unlimited. I worked in Skate for brands like Elwood and Aesthetics. And then obviously I started Crooks and Castles back in 2002. That's crazy. So you started Crooks and Castles, the one that the, the serpent, the snake. <laughs> right. What era was the Medusa? What era was that? That was like, so I was in New York in 03 and moonlighting, doing my own brand, or, or bringing Crooks back. And uh, I would say like 04, 05 is when I started making like, you know, all those type of graphics that you yeah. see for two decades. <laughs> for all the young kids out there that don't know, like I'm telling you, like Crooks and Castle, it had the streets on lock. Like it was the black and white. Um, what blank shirts did you use back then? We used the 1301 All Style, and then everyone was using that. That was like the industry standard. Yeah. And then we went to the 1701, which was a cotton ring spun, a little bit softer hand, felt a little bit better when you went in the club and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So all style. All style. <laughs> How much did you make off of all style 1301s? Millions, Ooh. 10 millions, 100 millions? Tens of millions, I'd Tens say. Of millions. Tens of millions. Off of fucking 1301 yeah. black with a white screen print front and back? Yes, yes. Did you design all the graphics? I would like to say 85% of the graphics. I, I mean, the ones that hit, yeah. I designed. Sure. How did you get into like selling it? Who was the sales guy? Were you the sales guy too? Um, so first uh, I used, when I launched Crooks, I had a guy out of Hawaii uh, from the, you know, the brand information. So my buddy Todd helped me get in a couple brands. I was freelancing for some urban brands and my boy AD got me in some brands and um, some stores in Chicago and the Midwest. There's a big sales agency now called The Foundation. They do BBC, Kappa. Um, they had a company called Museum Group, so they were repping us. And then my brother became the head of sales for Church and Castles. So when you were doing it, right, like back in that era, I guess a lot of the kids are so caught up in What do you think about the Shopify shit? The pre-order, the take the pre-order, never fulfill an order. <laughs> like what would happen to you back then if you got an order for a store, you never oh, fulfilled we it? We would get crucified, man. Everything had to be on time. Everything had to be on point. The tags had to be straight. Yeah. It had to be bagged. It had to have a size sticker, but now, technology and I don't know what we call it laziness yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like I, I mean all, all that plays into marketing whether good or bad you know if people are talking bad to you you got a you know, hundred comments or whatever it's it's all marketing to me. Yeah. Yeah. so back then you know a lot of it was like getting into stores right. do you think that business is still like here to stay yeah I think I think wholesale business I mean me as a consumer I enjoy going out going to the mall going to a store and shopping you know I like touching and feeling this stuff. But of course there's like things that you might see and you're like, oh, I want to get that. And you want the instant gratification of buying it right away. You know, my, my wife, I say, has a three package minimum at our door of Amazon packages that she's yeah. buying just because she's on her phone. So, you know, it's the future, but I think wholesale is still a big part of fashion. So uh, this is your new brand right here, Memory yeah, Lane. This is Memory Lane, yeah. What is the, like the, the goal for this is to get it into more stores, sell more online, or what is the end goal for, uh, for this brand? A little bit of both, you know, it's like, it's definitely to make it attainable. Like, it, it, I want people to be able to go out and see it or discover it. And then also, if, if they like the brand and they want to continue buying it, they have the freedom of buying it online. What's yeah. the secret to getting your brand inside of stores? Because I see like, 
hella people shopping. Everybody wanna, you know, they, they at this rack, they wanna buy stuff, right? Yeah. What's the secret to getting like all these retail buyers and all these stores to buy your product? The secret is having a good sales team like The Leverage has. You know, they, they're experienced reps that have been selling in this industry for, you know, over a decade. Last question. If you could go back to like the 19 year old version of yourself yeah. and having worked everywhere that you've worked, done what you've done, right? Yeah. What's the one piece of advice you have for yourself? Don't get into fashion. <laughs> I appreciate it, bro. That's the hug. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna talk about these Kuji sports jerseys. I got a couple notes on these. First, it's awesome to see a brand like kind of known for sweaters. This is how they branch into a different garment. You know, they've taken their same unique patterns uh, and they've just created something that, I don't know, actually looks pretty crazy for what they're going for. The second thing we can talk about here is licensing. So if you want to actually work with the NBA and the NFL and you're a brand of a certain size, you can basically pay a fee and then pay a percentage of what you're doing to be able to use all the different sports teams. We've seen people like Warren Lotus do this. Now we're seeing Kuji do this uh, and it looks great. We're here with Pele Pele. For those that don't know, give me some history behind, you know, one of the most legendary brands out here. Hey, I'm just thankful to be a part of it. You know, uh, Mark Buchanan, he's walking around somewhere, 47 year old brand. Love it. You know, we brought it back three years ago. So it's uh, pretty cool. Happy to be a part of it. So it's taken off. We just saw uh, Playboy Cardi wear this piece. Can you tell me a little, about, a little bit about this and uh, you know, how something like this comes together? Mark is still very much involved in the color schemes and the artwork. I mean, Cardi's a friend of the house. He, you know, is a supporter of the brand, thankfully. And yeah, he's been wearing Pelly all week in New York, actually. And that one he wore on stage with uh, Kanye West, yeah, which is pretty cool. Hey, meet yeah. David Elbaum. David, how you doing? Oh, the, the original here. The original 47 years deep in the sales? All right, all right. What's, yeah. So I want to know from you, what, what's your favorite style of what we have here? Oh, the bruiser jacket. Right all right, there. the bruiser? Yeah. That's the one up front? Yep. All right, I mean, take a little. Uh, what's this guy here? All right, here we go. And just on the mannequin in yellow. But right, so what, what makes the bruiser jacket special? I mean, frankly, I just think it has a lot of uh, metal work, a lot of embellishment, lots of stones. It is the only jacket where it's like covered, you know, from left chest, right chest, sleeves and back. And I think really that's what makes the piece super special. That, yeah, that, that is heat. Yeah. We put this on a couple different colorways and bringing this guy back for the Midwest. Midwest loves a good Peli hood. So that's interesting. So that moves better in the Midwest than it does like in New York, for yeah, instance. It's like a style thing. It's like, yeah. you know, Timberlands in New York and, you know, hooded Pellies in the Midwest. Oh, no, California, is anyway, got, got anybody out there or is it too hot? We got a couple of good things on the way, but, you know, the guys are putting it on out there, but you'll see some more. And so what's new this year? You guys are showing a project. Everything here is yeah. new. This is all 24. Uh, we're happy to re-release this guy. Ooh. Um, you know, which is Chief Keith kind of made this thing famous and released his project years ago. And it's been a highly requested uh, style for us to bring back. That's new. Bring back some of the snake embossed. No, that's crazy. Again, a lot of metal work. This is super Detroit. And so, the, and so this, is, this is snake leather or is it just a kind of a snake no, print? It, it's, uh, it's embossed. Yeah. Um, it looks, looks gorgeous. Leather, yeah, to kind of give it that look. And so we, and we have, uh, we got pillows now or is it this just, just for the booth or we yeah, uh, can, can I get it for the crib or? It's just for our showroom. Okay. Yeah, I mean, but it's supposed to inspire something like that. Like, oh, can I get it for the crib? Yeah, yeah so I, I was going to say, we could, yeah, we could, uh, we could really, I could really turn the living room around. Right. Hey, right, thank you so much for spending the time. Appreciate it, man. I've seen a lot of dope people wear your brand. Oh, I've seen you. Bollywood actors. Yeah. I've seen The Weeknd. Yeah. A lot of our followers are kids with the aspirations of having a big brand. How do you get your brand on these celebrities? So mostly it comes through stylists, whether they're for TV, film, or the celebrity personal stylist. And a lot of it happens by luck. Sometimes I get emails in my customer service account asking to style a celebrity. So. I would say there's no real secret except persistence. If you're a designer, you want to keep making your collections because you love what you do, and then luck will follow and get you to the right places. I love that. Is there any celebrity that wore your clothes that really like blew your mind and you were like, oh my God, how's this happening? Yes. One of the biggest movie stars in India, Amitabh Bachchan, wore our jacket recently, and I saw photos and video of him greeting his fans in our jacket. It was actually... This jacket, this is one of our brand new quilted pieces. And that blew my mind because I grew up watching him and he's a multi-generational icon. Like yeah. my parents watched him, I watched him. So this business can really take you anywhere if you put your heart into it. You know, if you know, you know, if you know, you know. So all, our page is super like wholesale. So a lot of our followers are like small brand owners who want to own a brand. When do you think a brand should be coming to project? Do you think brands should come to project or how would you explain this whole side of the business to like somebody who's never seen it essentially? 
So I think, especially now with direct-to-consumer becoming more expensive, it is a good idea to come to projects. I've been lucky because we've been doing this for many years. Even my dad with our previous brands has also done projects. So I was familiar with how the trade show system works. It can be expensive, so it's worth it to build up sales and to build a customer base before you come. But I will say that we do meet boutiques here. We do meet specialty stores here in department stores. So it's a great opportunity to meet the industry and there aren't that many opportunities to do that because it's tough to find your way in. So if you are able to find a booth here at Project, I think it's a great way to introduce your concept. If a brand were to get a booth here, what's your number one tip for succeeding at Project? make appointments in advance. So you need to call up as many stores as you can. You need to find customer lists. You need to see who your competitors are selling to. Call them up, email them, and ask them to come view your product. Because if you just come here without a plan, it's gonna be really unlikely you're gonna succeed. But if you make appointments, you invite people properly, do a photo shoot, create a lookbook, create a line sheet, invite customers to come and see you in person, then Hopefully they're also seeing some other brands. And if you're new, that gives you the chance to leverage the fact that they're coming here anyway. They'll come, they'll touch your product, feel your product, because people are bombarded with so many new brands every single day. You need to give people, make it really easy for them to come and see you. And this, and this, the show makes it easy. Red Letters. We're both from Atlanta, if you guys don't know. This is Shaddy with Red Letters. What's up, guys? Um, why did you decide to come out and do a table instead of like the crib? Because I feel like you were a D to C kid. You were a flex on the fucking uh, poly mailers kid, right? Why right. did you convert over? So one of the biggest things with running a consumer brand is understanding that you're gonna have like different pockets of demographics that you can tap into. And a lot of the times like people overlook the power of retail and wholesale. I mean, look around, this is what the fashion industry was built on. Being able to like kind of cater that audience, not only like unlocks an entire new market for you, but it allows you to do better in your direct to consumer because all of a sudden, you don't have more to, stores. You're more stores and you don't have to worry about making minimums anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you put out a design, you shop it around. The next thing you know, you might have 300 pre books yeah. and you can get that design made versus putting it on the site. You might not like get that immediate, you know, gratification. You cash flow more. You got to put up more money, more capital, more risk. Whereas right. with this, you already have somebody that's a cow saying, hey, I'll guarantee you, I'll sell 50 of them or 100 of them so then you can go and make 300 or whatever. Yep. And it's, it's really cool because it's like at the beginning, we would try to figure out how to like allocate our inventory because it was limited. You know, we didn't have like the same kind of structure that we have now when it comes to our production process. So if we get a hundred pieces, we're like, okay, well, we can make more money on the direct to consumer side. Why would we sell at a discounted rate to wholesale? It's going to sell anyways, right? That mindset is going to keep you in that same space. You'll never grow. And so what I've learned is when you make money for other people, they'll come back and they'll buy tenfold. So proving that concept to people is important and like standing behind your brand and allowing it to get discounted just to give somebody else a chance to sell it. And after that works, they're going to keep coming back and they're going to keep recurring and buying. And I mean, it's going to go through the roof. I would listen to what this guy said, because I kid you not, me and him uh, one summer drop shipped like a fucking uh, half a million dollars in mesh shorts. He got Tesla money. He got he got a roll. He got an AP money from that shit. Right. Cheers, it was, cheers, we cheers. was we was like the original. Uh, he was he was one of the original drop shippers for Superlight. He was killing it with the mesh shorts. I mean, honestly, bro, that like, was an era. That was an era. And on top of that, bro, like to see where Superline has come from like yeah. that point to now, I got to give you your flowers, bro, because it's not it's not easy to like to take. You were kind of like born into yeah. and then to like pave the way and bridge the gap between like, the, you know, old business and new business. So yeah. you're doing a great job. You're informing people. What uh, you want to show us uh, one favorite one piece from the collection. You get one piece. I get to show one piece. You get to show us one piece. This is what the people need to see. OK, OK. Those pants go crazy. That green one? I love the wide pant, honestly. Like, that one, let me see that one. This is great. This is crazy. It's adjustable at the bottom. Got that sun fade. And on top of that, there's no seam on the sides. So it allows us to do a really big print without it kind of chopping up or down. Well, how much is this uh, retail? So this retails at uh, 100. Uh -huh. And wholesale, leap it out, please. Uh -huh. uh, He's really pricing this wholesale. Realistically, I think this could retail for 150, 170, just depending on like what store it's in. Cause you gotta remember like it's different than online. Like at the end of the day, like when you go to a store, 
it's the lights, it's the vibe. It's, and obviously this is probably gonna be paired up with like a sneaker boutique, a Chrome Hearts. It could be paired up with, what other brands could this be paired up with? I mean, honestly, like you look at this kind of comes to Unfinished baby, Legacy. Honest. Unfinished Legacy. Unfinished Legacy. I mean, even big box retailers, like, you know, when I say big box retailers, like bigger brands, like gallery yeah. department, like they're using these same kind of colors. So it makes it easy to pair. Yeah. And if you design things with those bigger brands in mind, when they get into stores, those store owners are going to pair it with that. And all of a sudden people are taking your brand and they're associating it with a higher brand, like, you know, Hellstar or gallery department or Rude or whatever it may be. Yeah. I will give some game too when it comes to pricing, especially with people trying to price things coming into wholesale. Um, realistically, a uh, customer is going to want the retailer is going to want to be able to price the things double the cost. So like uh, if you're selling it on the website for 120, they want to be able to sell it for 60 or get it for 60. Right. Yeah. So you take that as like the baseline. And if you really want to put more money in their pockets, you develop products that you can offer at a higher price point. So like yeah. for this example right here, we took we deconstructed a fear of God tee. This is 425 GSM and about 12 and a half ounces. So for this, our sale price is 35, but we're going to retail this at 90. So we're yeah. giving people, you know, our Triple other shirts. Are, yeah, yeah, so yeah. these are our other shirts are 30 and 60 yeah. respectively. So by them paying five dollars more, they're then able to unlock 30 dollars in additional yeah. like revenue that they can bring. So in. if a store owner wanted to shop some of your collection, right, where could they find you? Brand Boom. You can email me at Shady S H A D Y No Slim at Red Letters. That's Shady at Red Letters dot US. Oh, I appreciate it. Shit, this is crazy. What is this? Uh, I'm a local artist here in town, so I dissect shoes and uh, frame them up like you would insects, pretty much. Did you buy this off StockX? No, I make them. I make them, I sell them here locally. Oh, the shoe, where did you get the oh, shoe? the shoe, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I buy the shoe locally, uh, or not, well, I guess locally from uh, other like stores and stuff. I try to stay local. But... You bought it from Timu? No. <laughs> no. Ashien? Nope. Okay, so you got it from the real deal source. Does this gonna make it worth more or less than the regular shoe? Hopefully eventually more. Uh, I just started this about six months ago. So it's, uh, we'll see as far as right now. I mean, I don't have much confidence to yeah. say like, it's worth more now, but. How much does this go for? Uh, right now I sold this piece for 900. 900. Mm -hmm. And I got the other one still available. I give them $900 right now for this. What's your Instagram? Mm -hmm. Do you have an Instagram? So yeah, it's uh, Deadstock Anatomies. Uh -huh. And then uh, my photography Instagram is Al Baker Photo. So have you, you done any other shoes? Uh, yeah, I've done a lot of Jordans. Uh, I actually have a Travis Scott for sale right now. How much is a Travis Scott? The Travis Scott I'm selling for a thousand. How much did you uh, buy the shoe for? Uh, I bought them for eight hundred. You make two hundred bucks dissecting the shoe. Pretty much, yeah. How it, much well, you no, no, because I sell I sell each shoe, uh -huh. so I sell oh, eight hundred a piece. So you double them up. Thousand, exactly. Uh, exactly. So how much did you buy this shoe for? So I bought this for a little over a thousand locally. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you're getting what nine hundred? So you're doubling so up. I'm, exactly, pretty much. Yeah. I'll, I'll offer you five hundred for it. <laughs> it's already sold. I, and the other one's not even made yet. <laughs> that's dope, bro. Appreciate it. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, if you guys want to see my, uh, and, uh, I'll both my Instagram. Okay, cool. Nice to meet you, bro. What do you guys do here? You guys do socks? So we started off, Odd Socks is the brand. We started off 10 years ago. We were the first to ever sublimate a picture on a sock. Mm. So we used to, do we have an example? I don't know if we do. So we were the first one to do it. We're the most bootleg sock world sock brand in the world. We turned that into all, in the beginning, we, we were just doing counterfeit, just uh -huh. printing images on socks. We blew up, we were in 2,000 stores. 10 years later, now we own 200 licenses. We're in 20,000 stores and now we own all this stuff. So we do slides, so we do, that's sublimation, yeah. So we were the first to ever do that. We would so, print an image on a sock, it'd be, it'd be a side yeah. by side image with a full picture on it. So if you guys don't know, sublimation is like a variation of heat press kind of. Um, and this essentially is a white sock with a black, right? Oh, yep. sock, yep. It's a white sock and then sublimation is kind of melting into the fabric. Yeah. So that way, like, it's not really a print inside, like on top, it's actually like more inside, but it only works with 100% poly, right? All right. Yeah, so yeah. All you guys remember like the era of like the fucking, the hot Cheeto socks? That was us. That was you. That was me. That was you, you, you flooded the streets. And now I own the Cheeto license. Yeah. This is officially licensed. So that was our brand. Yeah. We so did, you was not getting the license, you was just uh, in the street corner. I got corner. from them. Oh. And the NBA, and the Universal Studios, and everybody else. So. Did you get a, did you have to go to like court or how did no, it, what happened? you just settle out. But I mean, that 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 was a learning lesson. Uh -huh. You know, in the beginning it was an idea, then you got to grow into an actual company yeah. and a business. So this is what got us here. So the suits learning. came after you. They was like, yo, yeah, you're yeah, getting yeah, too yeah. much money with this yeah, chain. Yeah, I need mine. Like, we didn't have no chains back then, but uh, we, we've been doing magic 
now for 10 years. Before that, we were in the retail business. We were on the other side, so we knew that game too. So then we learned the licensing game. So now everything's officially what's licensed. The, what's the licensing game? So how do you get these licenses? In the beginning, it was kind of tough because we were new. But once you get one, it's easy to get another. Our first one, our first biggest one was Nickelodeon. And then we got Universal Studios. Then they start, now they come after us. So because we are the premier sock brand in this market, we also sell to stores you would never know. We have other lines that we make for stores like big key account stores. Who's the accounts that are buying these socks? Like who's who's carrying? Uh, we're these? in DTLR. We're in Snipes. We're in um, Zoomies. Uh, it's Sugar. We're everywhere, man. Damn, that's we're, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We also do we also do other lines that's not this brand. Other brands and wearing like Ross, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Dollar Tree. And you guys make CBS. all this here in the United States? No. Oh, so it's all overseas. So we own our own factory in China. We went to China, we bought our own machines, we produce everything ourselves. Socks, everything yeah. else we, we outsource. But just socks alone, we're, we do all that ourselves. Yeah. That's great. How long you been uh, in the business of apparel? Uh, shit, 30 years. 30 years. Yeah, so I was 10 years old. How old are you now? Four, I just turned 40. 40. If you could go back to like the 18 year old version of yourself, right? And like before you had gone through all this crazy shit, the lawsuits, the season, the, season, the suits coming after you, right? Yeah. The feds coming after you, getting in trouble and then redoing it and starting over again, right? What's the one thing you tell yourself? Um, I feel like the one thing is learn from the mistakes and just be consistent and then just have good people around you. That, for me, growing a business, me and my brother own this. We started this, we went from four of us to now 60 employees and working with family is not tough. So have good people around you that you can trust and you know to maintain. How long till I get one of these chains with a super line? I think you can get one right now. Y'all move a lot of weight. How, how long? How long I used does to it? Buy from y'all back in the day. How? Uh, from my parents? Yeah, I used to buy for, for blanks. Oh, that's so I used crazy. to have a clothing line. That's so crazy. That's wild. Yeah, I literally just started following you like a couple that's months so ago. Crazy. Yeah. OG in the game. Um, I saw you on a uh, leverage page. Yeah, Chris yeah, is yeah, my yeah. dog. Chris he used to be my rep. Oh, yeah. he used to rep the socks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris, you ain't never told me you was out here selling yeah, socks, yeah, yeah. dog. Yeah, that's my dog. That's yeah, crazy. yeah, we started around the same time. Yeah. That's, a, that's, yeah, what's that's up, what's up. Man. That's, hey, man, you can't give up in life. If nah. the suits come after you, the yeah, Dales yeah. come after you, that's look, they're going to come after you. They don't like hustlers. Right. If you in the street, you trap it out, you just try to get it, right? The suits going to come after you. The Dale, he's going to knock on your door. And guess what? Pay the man, move on, you and get you some racks. It, yeah, that's get you some racks. Because now Dale can't say shit. Yeah. If anything, you're paying Dale because Dale's writing up those contracts for you. Yeah, that's a fact, man. This brand behind me. It's crazy. I feel like once the world get their eyes on this, it's gonna get real crazy. So I just got a quick question for you. So if I'm just getting my brand started, like coming to a show like this, is that something that e even need to be in my mind? Or if it's not, what should be the first thing I should be thinking about? Honestly, the trajectory of the company. One, trying to figure out if you're actually trying to sell the stores, if you're gonna take more of a supreme approach where you're a uh, direct to consumer, um, things like that, man, I think that's, that's super important. I, I don't know if you can see it, but the shirt, the, 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 wait, no, not the shirt. The whole fit. What do you pull this inspiration from, bro? Because every time I see you, it's brand new shit, brand new pieces and it's all hot. What do you pull this inspiration from? Tell you the truth, man, I look at Japan's fashion week from like 97, like just their oldest, man. I, I, I'm i a fan of fashion, man. So I continue to re research, just find things that I'm interested in, kind of bring some old things back and kind of take that Virgil approach, man, where he changes things 25, 50%, man, and kind of make it your own, so. So, so I got a question. Whenever you are designing, is this somewhat where, like, you might be on the plane and you might think of something to just start designing, or do you have, like, a set time set aside to make design? Tell you the truth, girl, my best designs come in the middle of the night. So, like, when I'm delusional and, I, I mean, I just sit down and kind of cook up. It ain't all hits all the time, but right at 2, 3, something will click, and then I'm, I'm up until, like, 5 or 6. Hey, if it ain't a hit, it's almost a hit every single fucking time. This shit is heat. Hey, now look, you gotta do this one last thing. I know as a designer, this is one of the toughest questions, but you gotta pick your favorite piece. Right now? Right now, right now. I'm gonna get two. You only can do one. Only one? All right, two. Two is cool, All right, two, two, two is two. cool, two is cool. <laughs> it's one of our new pieces. That's, okay. That's, that's unreleased. Unreleased, unreleased. And then we did a crazy Chanel that, piece. All right, real quick, less than 30 seconds, explain this piece and then explain that piece. I try to make pieces where you can kind of wear a lot with it. So uh, that was kind of what I was doing here. I didn't want to put you in the box when it came to color scheme. So you could wear almost anything. Five. And this man, uh, 
It was a rendition of uh, the old Chargers jersey, so the 1996 jersey. And we took the bolts from the from the sleeves, man, and kind of created our own little Olympic situation. All right, e, let them know where you can find you on the ground. At Faith and Figures, man. At Faith and Figures online. Man, support the brand, man. Hey, appreciate y'all so much. Hey, thank you, B-Dog. Yes, I had to do this exclusively for the city. Right. See, when you see the city, we think everybody knows what the city is. For the city, for New Orleans. What's jam, baby? What's good, what's good, what's good? Hey, so look, check this out. I'm super proud that you're here, bro. Like, is I don't know if this is your first time, second time, third time? First time, first time. First time, how, how is it so far? It's great, it's a great experience. You know, just being around different creators, just, it's pretty much like the world platform, right? You start in your local city, you get here, and now you're around kind of the whole nation, right? For sure. So look, we, we was out, that was like a couple of months ago. That was for, I think like, around Black Friday, like Thanksgiving time. Around Black Friday, Friday. so you chilling right now. Yeah. We working right now, we was talking heavy though. Uh, hey, but look, I just want to say, hey, if you getting your brand started, this might not be the first thing that you think about coming to, but as you continuously expanding, it's not even probably about the orders, but it's more about getting out your space and getting in a new environment. By being in a new environment, what, what's something that you learned so far? Just a bigger learning curve, honestly. You know, if you do something the same way, like we was doing online and in our flagship store, and not just transitioning kind of to the wholesale, you just like learning from scratch. It felt like, you know, when I first started in 2017, 2018, that's how I feel now, you know? It's just a whole learning curve. And one thing that you put me on just with this is just, it's really about relationships. A lot of people probably think that it's like, I got to have the best stuff. But if you ain't building relationships with nobody, then you're probably not going to get that far. Is that true or false? Yeah, for sure. That's that's 100% true. Hey, now let me know. What's the fair piece? What's your fair um, piece? Now look, it's spinning around for me, spinning around. How much do this do this retail at one of the stores? 200. 200? Yeah. 200. Hey, what's... You can tell. You can feel it. You know what I'm saying? It's I can, I can put it on? Yeah, yeah. Hey, hold up. Try on, try on her. I'm about to buy this off the. I'm about to buy this off the rack right now. Hey, I like the crop. I like the crop. I like the crop. The crop fit too. Hey, I went my dog Izzy. I had to do this one, dog. I, had, I appreciate you, bro. Real talk. Bro. Bro. Hey, my dog flew us out this morning. We who we is in in our records, in in our records. <laughs> hey, appreciate you, bro. Let them know where they can find you. Maximo Apparel on all social media platforms. www.maximoapparel.com. For sure. Hey, appreciate you.